very lucrative year, but surprisingly not for what you think it was, for cybersecurity compromise. What's interesting when we look at cybersecurity and the compromise of it is that it is costly. If you took all of 2019 around the globe and every single compromise, the average cost was $6 million. You bring it down by country and the U.S. leads at $8 million. That's a lot, but got me curious. What was happening between 2018 and 2019 to create such costs with cybersecurity? And we learned that it's up 54%. Just the first of 2019 had 4 billion record compromise. Now, you break it down by region, <coughs> and healthcare leads the pack at almost $6.5 million per compromise. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know many companies that can take a $6 million or $6.5 million hit. So it got me thinking, what's going on with the cost of compromise? What's in the cost? Because we need to define it a little bit more. So let's break it down. Cybersecurity, right? Cyber part, electronic data. Security part, <laughs> protecting it. Makes sense. But now what we have is what is artificial intelligence. And my simple version of that is it's really just programming tools to think like humans. But as we all have had these experiences, that AI marketer is with you when you're surfing at home looking for shoes. It knows the shoes you buy, the frequencies you buy, the average cost of your shoes. It knows what stores you like, the location. It knows the frequency that you shop. Funny enough, you go to work and those shoe ads are following you there. You open up that browser, it knows what your business interests are. So AI is tightly connected to the electronic data because we've seen a lot of compromises come directly at us because it knows what we're interested in. It's doing its job. It's giving us the information that we're interested in. But what is compromise? The interesting thing is cybersecurity compromise is the exposure of confidential information to an unauthorized person or people. Now that got me thinking. What is the source of all of these compromises? Because $8 million, not many companies can take that hit and they're still in business, so what's going on? So let's go and ask ourselves, what are the sources of cybersecurity compromise? In 2019, the number one source was human error, self-induced. What's interesting about that is the rest of the pack is about 60% of cybersecurity compromises are those bots, machine learning, other AIs. But we also saw another trend in 2019, which is the use of AI to do those deep fake things. What's interesting is a CEO in Europe had their voice composite, deep fake, artificial, put it on a voicemail, pay our Hungarian supplier $220,000. Now, that got me thinking again as well. Where's the business rules in that? Is accounts payable really going to pay the Hungarian supplier <coughs> off the authorization on a voicemail? Are there not internal controls through business processes that should be followed regardless? So of those human errors, let's just take a peek at what we're talking about. For example, the state of Ohio, tax returns, 9,000 tax returns, not quite accurate, but sent to the wrong recipients. Exposure, confidential data to unauthorized people. The thing about that is you can't get that information back. That's the ripple effect of cybersecurity compromise. Once exposed, so maybe there's costs in that. Or you look at Apple, the FaceTime, a coding bug. And this has got me now thinking again about business rules because where's the quality assurance, completeness checks, or even validation checks once you put it into production? Did they not know that happened? Or Salt Lake City Community College. 42,000 financial student records put on a thumb drive, placed in an envelope, <coughs> just for that. Human error is never gonna go away. But maybe that's part of the cost because AI can exploit some of those lacking business rules. Well, let's go over to the bot side of the house. Now, what we see up on screen is an application. It's artificial intelligence. And that purple dot that you see is an employee. 
But what we see about this kind of application is it's a network traffic analyzer. And it can track where that employee started to surf the internet, just like at home, they're at work surfing. And so they're going to places like Amazon. And then they're going to a place called the Tor Network. Now, if you're not familiar with the Tor Network, that's the black marketplace. That's where you buy and sell to get new hacking tools or <clears throat> what's the latest AI, or maybe those four billion records that were compromised are getting sold or bought there. And imagine that. Because now I can get all of that personal profile data. Somebody else collected it. I can now just manipulate it and create my own AI attack. But they're also going to places like Facebook and LinkedIn and Microsoft. And so we have this blending of personal and professional. But think about the use of a network traffic analyzer to not only be exploitive, but to help businesses enforce those business rules. For example, what if this employee was unaware that they're going out to the Tor network because in their search terms, the response back was, this is your solution. Click here, go here, we'll have that answer for you. This site is cheaper than the other site. That's the thing about employees. They're not cybersecurity experts, but the tools can be configured to do that on their behalf. And that's when we start to see these exposures probably have some controls that could reduce that. Maybe that helps with the cost. So now, let's take a look at the next question that we have up here. What's happening with the cost of cybersecurity compromise? What's interesting, it takes on average six months to either identify you've been compromised or detect it. And I'm back to that same question about business rules because there's nothing in those six months that people are validating internal controls. Like, did the law get compromised? Did the database not get encrypted or get decrypted? Or did somebody start doing payroll on voicemail approvals rather than following internal controls? Six months, that's a long time to be exposed. But then you figured it out. Now your average is almost two months or more to contain that compromise. Let's talk about containing that compromise for a bit. What's involved there is the cost You've got to then go back maybe seven months on your backups to find a point in time you weren't contaminated. So that takes time. You might have to hire a forensic expert to help you look at that box, determine root cause and source. But now you're in cybersecurity world. Legal's involved. You've got to report it to the FBI, the federal, state, industry regulators. And then maybe sales and marketing because you've got to message it out to customers, business partners, investors, key relationships. HR is involved because you might have to do some messaging for employees. You might even have to reprimand one of those human errors. But then you have to stop the bleeding because if employees are still sending out wrong tax information, you have to retrain them. You have to put in the business rule. And so there's a lot of cost there. But you know what's interesting? We haven't even gotten to the rest of managing a cybersecurity compromise, which is the eradicate, recover, restore, and then you have to do training, and then you have to stop it all again, because what we know about humans is we're prone to doing it over and over again. And so those costs for one cybersecurity compromise, $8 million, $6 million, how many companies can take that hit? And what we realize is they're taking that hit over a very long period of time. And then you have to figure out if it happens again, two compromises. It could be different related sources, a phishing attack. And so you realize what businesses are faced with when it comes to cybersecurity, and I start to appreciate the costs of a cybersecurity compromise, which makes me want to say, let's stop the madness. Because they do know what's in our wallet. They know that we have $220,000 to an Hungarian uh, supplier. They know that. They know what's in our wallet. They know what's in your wallet because you're getting ads that tell you you like this and they know where you go to get it or on your cell phone. So we're aware of that. But let's switch it and talk about how we can empower businesses. Now obviously business rules is a good thing but here's another example. Software that is artificial intelligence and in this view what we see is dashboard. Behind it is the alerting. This alerting goes out to logs, like your database logs. Whether you're 
server is in the cloud or on premise. And it can look at things like routers and again, help those employees who are going out to maybe a malware network or an unauthorized place. And it can help block and tackle that, reduce the likelihood of the exposure. Look at how many people put a thumb drive onto their laptop. A dashboard can scan and prevent the likelihood of infecting. You have a fighting chance. And the other side here is to look at how we can manage cybersecurity throughout our businesses. Now, let's have a plan of action because what do we know? 52% of it is human error, so it's not if you're going to have a cybersecurity compromise, it is when. So think about that management, those stakeholders that have to be involved. They can be ready for it. So we know what we're going to do about that compromise. That can reduce the time it takes to detect it, let alone contain it. And when you do that, you have a fighting chance to reduce your costs and your impacts. Let's refresh our security awareness training because now we know that 50% of the issue is not whether or not the email has a phishing address, but maybe it's that business process where somebody is unaware of cybersecurity transfer and thinking a thumb drive in an envelope walked over is a good idea. They may not be aware of encrypting and decrypting or who to ask about electronic data transfer or even if their screen is viewed by somebody else, is that an exposure? They need to know what to do about it and internally businesses need to understand how they're refreshing their business rules and communicating that across their whole but it also comes down to just plain and simple security controls. The controls are your business rules. A lot of times people want to say that's a policy and that's a piece of paper and that's separate. That's not really true. I think what we've noticed is that's not really true. And when we turn on some of these controls, it does change our performance, right? We do have to do a 2FA. It does take a little bit longer. We do have to encrypt and decrypt, or our mail is going to be a little bit slower compared to this scanning, as we saw earlier with the proof point. We have a lot of tools with a lot of AI that assist us, that help us screen and, and kind of eliminate the options or the likelihood of it. All good stuff. So let's let have 2020 be a lucrative year for your company's wallet to keep the money in there. Contain those costs by realizing that your business rules are your cybersecurity. I encourage you to turn on your security throughout all of your business processes and all of your systems. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kate.